Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today we're going to go over gardening in 2022. For a lot of you gardeners, I think that's all I need to say, but for those of you who are fortunate enough not to have had some of the issues, 2022 has been a really difficult gardening, gardening year. It's been difficult for everybody that I know and it's been difficult for me. There's the weather. The weather has been just odd and weird. And then there's been the drought in the west and floods in other places and it's just been a really weird year. We had a warmer winter here in Utah and that's allowed several of the bugs that don't usually overwinter very well to overwinter and proliferate heavily and they've spread several diseases. So there's diseases that are on the rise. And trying to get a really bountiful harvest in 2022 has been very difficult. Now, if your area has been different and you're getting bountiful harvests, I would love to hear about it. That would bring some positivity into my life. Now, my garden isn't doing horrible, but it's not doing the same as it's done in previous years. So, so as my garden tour for July, I wanted to go over some of the things that have been happening in my garden and tell you what I've done to kind of try to mitigate the damage. So what's tending to be the norm, I want to start here on the south side of my house. First show you my glorious maypop. Look how big that is. No flowers yet, but I didn't see flowers until August last year, so we're not expecting them right now. But right here, I have my paste tomatoes, some cherry tomatoes, and some pepita squash planted. Now, as you can see, these squash are suffering a little bit. They're not growing the way I would like them to. This one's quite stunted. And the issues that we've been having, maybe I can find one here. Let me see if I can find one. See that guy down there? That is one of my big issues, especially over here. I have cleared out probably 20 of these since the beginning of the season. I have, there's been several egg clusters, but I think I've been, you know, I've been catching these guys twice a day let me see if I can get him into a canister. I'm gonna to have to put the camera down to do this. So this is my weapon of choice. I get him into a little cup like this. I had just keep this out here. Got a little stick to help push him in there because I don't want to touch him and I hope he's not gonna fly. Ah, okay. So now that I've thoroughly embarrassed myself, I don't like touching them. This little guy right here, this is what happens to them. There. That one's gone. So that was a squash bug. And from what I've heard, they are just proliferating beyond normal levels. I attribute that to the warmer winter that we had last year. They, a lot more adults survived and they're coming into the gardens and just wrecking havoc on squash. Now I've been spraying them with seven, seven with carbaryl. I will put the spelling of that on the screen and it hasn't seemed to slow them down. But then again, that carbaryl was saved over from last year. So I'm wondering if the efficacy is a little off. But anyway, let me see if I could find some eggs and show you what they look like. Okay, right here we have eggs of squash bugs. And what you do with these is you can use duct tape. I just use my fingers and squish them. You don't want to leave any eggs on there because once you've left the eggs on your squash plants, you've pretty much lost the battle because those will hatch shortly and then you'll have dozens of babies to contend with. So anyway, squash bugs have been an issue. The next is tomatoes. So we have a few tomatoes on the vine, but we don't have near the numbers that we've had in the past. And I think the issue is the heat. If, it gets, if the heat gets above 90 degrees, tomatoes will abort their blossoms. We're getting a few more tomatoes up here. We're getting a few cooler days, but that's reduced my harvest. Now I'll show you another problem. This is called blossom end rot. These are my San Marzano tomatoes. They're a paste tomato and paste tomatoes are very susceptible to blossom end rot. Now what it is, is it is an inability for the tomato plant to utilize calcium in the fruit appropriately. And it comes and it happens when there's stress on the plant. So either a really cold spring, a cold snap, hot weather, inconsistent watering, that can inhibit the flow of calcium to the tomatoes. And that's what causes that. It's not necessarily a lack of calcium in the soil, in Utah here, we have plenty of calcium in the soil. It's just the inability of the plant to be able to utilize it because of stress. So the way to avoid it 
We don't have that on this one. This is a mushroom tomato. To avoid those issues, like the heat and the late spring frosts, and also try to consistently water them. If you're in an area where calcium in the soil is an issue, make sure you do amend the soil with calcium. But as I said in Utah, that's not an issue. Let's go show you another tomato issue. But before we leave, these are my sweet potatoes. No real issues with these other than I lost a lot of them in the heat because I planted them when it was 100 degrees. But several of them survived and we'll see how they turn out. Now here in Utah, there's another disease that's been proliferating and it looks a lot like tomato leaf curl. Now, this plant is curling, but if you notice, the veins are green, the leaves are green, it looks healthy, it's got a lot of growth. We're getting tomatoes on it despite the heat. So I don't think this is a serious issue. It's not happening to the top, but it is happening to the bottom. Now I do have an empty area over here. This area is empty right here. That's a tomato that actually had beet leaf curl. And beet leaf curl is an issue that's taking out a ton of tomatoes here in Utah. And it's spread by the beet leaf hopper. So the leaf hopper population was not killed back by our winter. And so it's been spreading the disease. And I'll show you a picture on the screen of what beet leaf curl looks like. If you notice, the veins are purple. The plant is yellow and stunted. So that's what happened to this one right here. Now my peppers, on the other hand, are doing really well. They're actually starting to change color. This one's Doe Hill. This one's Antohi and it'll turn red. The Doe Hill will stay orange, like that one down there. And then we've got some nice sized bells that I could pick now, but I want to let some of them turn red. So the peppers have been doing okay. Squash, and I have to go through every single day and spray and pick squash bugs and pick off eggs, but the squash is doing pretty good. The sweet potatoes that I put over here are not putting on a lot of growth, and I think what the issue is is this compost mulch is more mulch than compost, so they're suffering from nutrient deficiencies. So I've been trying to fertilize these a little bit more, see if I can get some growth on them. But if we don't get growth on them, this will be a good spot for, to try them again next year because the, because the compost will have broken down a little bit more. We almost have my first ripe tomato. This is a black sea man and isn't it gorgeous? So the tomato will finish turning red and then the top will turn this gorgeous black color. It's got a smoky flavor and I love it. So these tomatoes are a little smaller than the ones over here, but this is because I planted them in an area that gets a lot more shade. So we've got some jet stars that are starting to produce. Got a few tomatoes on there, not a ton. And these are my paprika peppers. They're producing a lot of peppers, but so far none of them have been changing color. I really like this variety and I've, I've grown it for a few years now. So this is a good one. We've got more squash in here. And I think this one also suffered from nutrient deficiencies because I had to add extra fertilizer. They're finally starting to look good. This one's a yellow squash. I thought it was a zucchini, but it's a yellow squash. We've already harvested our first fruit off of it today. And this one was supposed to be a yellow squash, which it might be. I'm not seeing any female flowers on it yet, so we'll see what happens here. My Jerusalem artichokes are getting huge. They're gonna get big yellow flowers on the top of them shortly. And my artichoke finally produced some buds. Now these are smaller buds. They're not, I mean, they're not thick at all. They're really thin, so I think I'm just gonna let it flower and then I'm gonna tear it out. This is the third year trying artichokes and I've not had luck at all. But anyway, it'll make a beautiful flower. So next week is the week I'm gonna go through and clean out my garden beds. And all of these, strawberries are going to go. Now it looks like they haven't been watered, but this bed 
if you touch the soil, it's wet all the way down. It, I may need to start watering it more than twice a week, but it's just, you know, even when it gets, a, even when these get a lot of water, they just don't do well. So these strawberries are all coming out. This is a Costa Romanesco, uh, this is a Costa Romanesco zucchini, and I have to tell you, this is one of my favorites. I actually have been eating some of them raw. They're so good. They're sweet. They're crunchy. They are starting to get squash bugs on them, so I do need to watch this really carefully. So this is the only Costa Romanesco that I have. I thought I had more than one, but this is it. Tonight is my watering night, so I've got to come out and water these, but this is my jalapeno peppers. They haven't been doing very well. We have a few, but they're really tiny. As you can see, they're, yeah, they're just tiny. We still have time before the end of the year comes, so we'll see if we can get those producing. This right here is a sun sugar tomato. It's finally starting to produce some tomatoes. The heat just has not been my friend. I decided to ditch the single stem idea and we're just tying this up, you know, just to the single pole as we go. You're just, so I wanted more tomatoes because this year, as I said, we're just not getting a lot. This one's a yellow squash. This one's, this one's a Kricknick squash. And then I planted some seedlings, another Costa Romanesco, because I think I have three of the Kirknick squash already. So I'll just pull that one when the Costa Romanesco down here gets big enough. My banana peppers are doing really well. We've already had a big harvest off of these. Got a Thai basil. It's also time to harvest my dill. So we're going to be pulling out all this dill and saving it for when we do pickles. And these little wasps, I think these are, I can't remember the name of these, but they love, for some reason, I don't know what it is, they love the, the dill. They love the dill once the seeds have dried. My chard is doing so much better. I, I've been pulling off all of the leaf minor damage and we are getting less and less as we go. We've got an empty bed here that is waiting for my winter vegetables. And those are in pots right now. And I'm getting ready to transplant those up. I'm going to transplant those up into larger pots tonight. And then I think in a week or two, we'll put them out in the garden. So I've got to clean this bed out. But I did throw a couple of beans in here just to hold the place. Not all of them have come up, and some of them have been eaten when, after they came up. So we're having an issue with beans this year. Cucumbers are getting larger. No blossoms yet. I take that back. We've got first cucumber blossom right there. Not open yet, but it's getting ready. I don't see any on any of the rest of them. So we will eventually get cucumbers here too, and I'm excited about that. In a few days, we'll have this cleaned out and I'm going to plant carrots and beets. We're going to put a shade over the top of this and then put down some paper over the top of the seeds so that we can keep them a little more moist so we can harvest them. And then this bed has just been a disappointment. I have got to figure out what I can grow in here. Uh, I planted onions in here and they, came, they did finally head up, but they're just tiny. Let me show you the size. The red ones have not headed up at all, but my Spanish white, all of them are about this size. So they're not devastatingly small, they're usable, but they're tiny. And we've got smaller ones here. Tiny one there. So this bed, I don't think got enough sun. That's the size of the red right now. As you can see, they're leaning over, so I don't know if they're going to even head up anymore. 
It's just been kind of a sad year for onions here. So this bed may end up being just for leafy greens. Kale's doing fantastic. Lettuce is having issues because I think it's just too hot for it. And too much shade for the Thai basil. So sorry for the quality on this. This is just a quick peek at what I've done since I, uh, since I filmed this video. Now it's been a few days and I had time to actually come in and clean up. I didn't take down that cilantro because the seeds are not dry yet. But I've cleaned up all the dill, all the lettuce that was seeding itself except for the ones that I want to reseed themselves. Everything's cleaned out, looking a lot better. It's weeded and we actually have beds ready to plant. So we'll show you when it's time to plant this, I'll show you what we're going to plant. Cucumbers are looking fantastic. Another bed ready to plant. That's the size of my onion harvest. It was so dismal. I'll show you the rest of them in just a minute. And there's the onion bed already cleaned out and ready to replant. I love the evening view of my garden. Here's my onion harvest drying and it was dismal. Only about half the onions that I planted actually grew. These two are the largest and those are the size of my average onions usually. So next year I'm not going to plant them in the shade. So before we get back to the pre-recorded video I wanted to show you my little seedlings that are ready to plant. Most of these are cauliflower. We've got kale cabbage in the back, way back there. And we've got kohlrabi way back here. Chichimisai looking really good. And then way in the back we've got some chard. So all of this will be in our fall gardens. So now we're going back to the pre-recorded video. Now the things that have gone well were my spring crops. We did get several good cauliflower. First year I grew cauliflower several good heads of cabbage which i'm still eating and a ton of great kohlrabi so the kohlrabi is doing really well the kale was a flop all of it got aphids and none of it's growing very well i think it's just too hot for it and the chard to this point has had leaf minor damage really severely but as you saw the chard is starting to do better Beans, I'm having a hard time getting them started, but I'm getting a few off of my green stock. Let me just go and show you that really quick before we close this video. So these are my green stocks. They look green and fantastic and wonderful, but I really have to clean this one out. If you notice, everything's bolted. All the lettuce is bolted, the irregular is bolted. We had issues with my nasturtium. I think it was aphids. The kale were just completely aphid infested. This one's so stressed it's actually starting to bolt already. Calendulas are getting ready to bloom. And this bean right here, I think it's been suffering some drought stress. These planters have been drying out so quickly with the 100 degree temperatures that I've had to water them daily. And if I don't get out here at the right time in the day, everything wilts. This one seems to be doing a little bit better. I've been harvesting beans off of my beans. The marigolds absolutely love the heat. The basil's loving the heat. And the chamomile's thinking about flowering. Now I don't know what it is that the birds love, but I was inside my house watching this the other day and the birds were all over this. I think they were little finches and they were hanging out on these stems. Maybe they're eating the seeds. I'm not sure, so I'm not gonna deadhead them. Or maybe they're eating bugs. There's about 10 of them out on the top here of each one of these planters and just pecking away and enjoying themselves. Now I have a suggestion if you're having a hard garden year like I am. That suggestion is, do not give up and do not stress about it too much. You know, if this year is just becoming overwhelming and you're thinking about giving up gardening, maybe it's time to start pulling out some of the most stressed plants instead of trying to waste a lot of time saving them and then work on the plants that are doing well. Be grateful for the plants that you have that are doing well and then chant the gardener's mantra and that is 
There's always next year. It'll be better next year. So say it with me. There's always next year. It will be better next year. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, please like and subscribe, share it with your friends. Go have a wonderful garden adventure and don't give up.